Hi everybody, my name is Max Maker and this week it's all about testing props and motors for the hydrofoil. Sorry for the delay guys, I hope to finish this this spring. More on this later. I need to get a rain barrel, so to transport this I could use this trailer, but I've got all the aluminium on there right now. This is about 500 kilograms and I don't feel like unpacking it uh, just to get the barrel. So I thought maybe I could transport it with my bike and I've got a plan. Let's see if that works and hopefully I can use this as a trailer on the bike somehow like this that looks promising So far, it's working quite well. This rain barrel is not just for the motor, of course. I will also store water in it for the garden for the upcoming summer. Actually, for last summer, because I filmed this one year ago. That's how long the hydrofoil was delayed. That one. You must be wondering right now why it takes me so long to finish this project and the first reason is that I moved to a new house and that took a lot of my time away and after that I was involved in a very big construction project but that's over now and I can finally focus a little bit more on YouTube again and I'm committed to finish this by Easter. Okay, it really likes to jump around. It's been an absolutely beautiful day and the ride was a lot of fun so I made a second trip to get these foundation bricks to elevate the barrel a little bit. Of course it started to rain towards the end and I broke one of the bricks but it still worked and I connected the barrel to the rain pipe right next to it. It's been one week, let's see where we are. Not that great. Four weeks now, that's not too bad. I would say that's almost half full. And it's one week later, let's have a look. Oh that's not too bad. I think just a few more days and it's full. Some of you guys might remember this thing. This is my router sled from my previous build where I flattened this uh, wood disc cookie, which was a complete failure. But I think this can go perfectly on top of the rain barrel and then we can put a rod in here that is the pivot for the motor. So here's the motor and what I want to do is build a pivot so it acts like this. On top we have a scale, on the bottom we have this so we can measure the thrust. It's upside down right now and I want to add these spacers here, left and right, kind of a stop block so it can't wander off the rim of the barrel. To attach them I'm going to use these M10 screws I think. I've got hundreds of them left over from a project that never came to fruition. Start tapping. Very handy. And I feel like James Bond. Just realized that I want to be easily able to take this motor, pop it in, pop it back out, to do adjustments, testing, changing out the prop. And I can't do this if I always have to put a bolt for here. And also this doesn't give me any lateral stability, you know, it will hang fine, but it can wobble this way. I think I'm going to modify this piece of wood, so make something like this, like this cut. So now I can hook it in, it pivots about this point and it's secure. I think I just take this piece of plastic, put it on here, and can't wobble about that much anymore. These are the scales that I want to use. They attach with this hook, and now I need to attach them here to something. And I found this piece that fits almost perfectly. Now hopefully there will be 30 kilograms of force acting in this direction, so I need the brace. And I found this in the scrap spin uh, from a different project and I'm just gonna mount this somewhere here. Okay. 
I just went ahead and pulled really hard on it. And as you see, I bent the aluminum a little bit. So I need some kind of brace down there. And I've got about 50 of these plates left over from a project yeah, where I had ordered too many plates for the products that I was building. This won't be pretty, but I just want it to hold up. It's just a test stand. Okay, this finally holds up. 30 kilograms is uh, all I was able to pull. And yeah, I grossly underestimated the force acting on here. 30 kilograms is a lot. All right, I think this is ready. This is really strong now. Here's the scale. This motor will push in this direction, pulling it this way, and then I can see how much thrust this generates. And then I need to tweak the prop probably, or I need to get rid of the motor. And I already know that these cables are a tiny, tiny bit too short, which is really annoying because these solder joints take a lot of time, a lot of heat, lots of material, and they're really thick. So uh, I don't know yet how I'm going to put them in, a, in the enclosure physically. Size is just too big, probably. I didn't notice it at the time, but this rotation really caused some problems later. Oh boy. I keep looking at the scale and the amp meter as I push the throttle. So these are the key points from the first test. I drew 40 amps from the battery and about 83 amps through the motor with 90 kilograms of thrust. That's not bad, but I want to get closer to about 30 kilograms of thrust. So the test stand works really nicely, uh, the tub is also good, uh, this works, the remote works, the vest works, the only problem now is that I don't have enough uh, force here, not enough um, thrust, and I don't think it's drawing enough current, so that's what I've got to work on. I increased the current, that gave it so much thrust that it bent the strut that it was attached to, it slammed into the side of the barrel, breaking the prop and the barrel of course and it only narrowly didn't cut its own cables because then the vest would have shorted itself and all the amps would go through the ESC and break itself, basically uh, burning a lot of cash, a lot of cash. So I replaced the old beam with this new beam and this one is much more rigid, especially in torsion because this is kind of a box section and here the motor was also offset to one side so it would twist it. This is a lid from a kitchen container that I hot glued to the side of the barrel. So this is the old motor and this is a new motor. This supposedly is better and it certainly looks to be made from a better quality. And the cool thing is the cables are really long and I don't have these thick things that will really cause some problems in a new assembly. The only issue is overall that the cables are a little bit short and I've got two props to choose from. Um, the left one and this one is a little bit smaller. This one was recommended. So I'm going to try this one first. So task number one is fitting this onto here. Not sure how I'm doing that yet. It's called a mini lay for a reason. The prop just about doesn't fit. So I had to find a different way to enlarge the center hole. I chopped off the head on the belt grinder to expose the other side of the hole. And that could then be aligned with the drill press shaft. And to hold this down, I can't press down onto the uh, wings of the prop. So I machined this thing that goes on top and then presses down only in the center. And that worked out really well and I could bore it out to 12 millimeters. That went down much smoother than anticipated and the hole turned out to be pretty much spot on in the center. But then I had to find a way to machine the keyways at the back because they didn't fit the geometry of the shaft at all. The only way I could come up with was with the CNC. Unfortunately, the only way I can clamp this is not this way, but this way. So I need to measure this angle. But instead I took a picture of the setup and then I could import it into Fusion 360 and design a slot that exactly follows this angle, which is a little bit offset from the X and Y coordinate system. A quick test to see if it's actually doing what it's supposed to do.
this cannot be good for hydrodynamics at all. These plugs are lovely, but these are the kind of size that are on the vesk and I don't want to mess with the vesk, so I'm going to swap them out, unfortunately. And with these big cables, the hot air gun is the best option to get them off. I added these uh, silicone sleeves, so in case these solder connections fail, uh, the cable will hopefully not short anything and yeah, I don't know what happens to the vesk if one of these cable breaks uh, mid, mid flight. Time to let the vest do the setup. I had a fire extinguisher ready just in case anything shorts out. And the vest kinda does some tests and figures out the right parameters for this prop. And as you can see it spins up really nicely and then I attached this with these screws and I added some oil so they don't seize in the water. And time for testing. And just listen to these sounds, I think they speak for themselves. I'm absolutely happy with this result. It draws 40 amps from the battery and generates 26 kilograms of thrust. Uh, that's really good. We're close to 30 kilograms where we want to be. So now let's check out the black prop and see how it does. Oh, this almost fits. Let's give it a spin. A very similar result, 40 amps and 25 kilograms of thrust compared to 26 from the white prop. This is my favorite prop so far because it's made out of metal and the edges are thinner. So this one is the one I'm going to experiment with and I'm trying to reduce the diameter of this by cutting off these corners. I could have just chopped off the edges on the mini lathe, but that didn't seem right to me. I want to scale down the entire prop, so somehow I need a CAD model of this to do it with the CNC. And I thought why not use one of these scanning apps. So I gave this a little bit of the white texture so the uh, camera of my phone can better see it. And as you see on the first try it chopped off the edges. I think this reference guide on the back was too small. So I printed out a bigger one and then tried it again and it came out with a very reasonable result. But as you see it's not perfect, it's not smooth, so I couldn't really work with this. So I had lunch instead and then I took a picture of the prop, traced the outline and then set the outline back by 6 millimeters, so I could then cut that shape with my CNC. Obviously this will only cut in 2D space, so the edges will be quite sharp and I need to file them down afterwards. So here's the setup. I have this block of aluminium and then I drilled one 12 mm hole in the very inside and I tapped that so then I could screw in a 12 mm bolt through the entire prop and I know exactly where the center of the prop is in reference to the CNC. But I didn't know the rotation yet and for that I had this idea of taking the drill bit and putting it in a certain location that I know and then aligning this saw blade with one of the edges on the prop and with the drill bit so that gave me the perfect rotation. These markings are the edges of the chamfer that I need to file into this. So I have a reference and I know where to file a little bit more and a little bit less. I have no idea if this will be halfway usable at the end. To my surprise it came out pretty nice, very smooth and it looked alright, looked like a prop. And here you can see the difference in size that it was before and after. I want to make it look a little bit nicer and pink was the only color that was open at the time. It's ready for a test now. And I'm absolutely happy with this result. 29 kilograms of thrust and 56 amps of current. That's both uh, really good and this should hopefully be enough to get me falling. But why is the small prop better? So let me explain to you why the small prop is better than the big prop. 
We've got the battery, we've got the ESC and we've got the motor. And this is a 100 kV motor and we've got 50 volt batteries. So 50 times 100 is 5000 RPM. That's the top speed that the motor can spin at. And it makes sense that if you have a very large prop and you have a limited amount of force, you cannot twist it all the way to the max speed. So let's assume it spun at 2500 RPM. That's what I think actually happened. And the small prop is easier to spin, so it's spun at 5000 RPM, which is its top speed. Uh, 50 volts from the batteries. Uh, for the big prop, we measured 40 amps. And 40 amps times 50 is 2000 watts. So that's the power that we have at our disposal to spin up this prop. Here we've got 50 times 56 amps, that's what we measured. So we've got 2800 watts. Already we have more power in the system with the small prop. Now what the ESC does, it changes the voltage and it changes the amperage a little bit around because it's a free phase system. And at 2500 RPM, it would only be supplied 25 volts. And if you divide 2000 watts by 25 volts, you get 80 amps. And that's the maximum current that I set to the ESC. So it would like to uh, supply more current, but I'm not letting it. Because if there's too much current in this motor, it will burn up. So we want to reduce this number. Here on the other side, it could spin at full speed because the prop is smaller. And at full speed, it uh, uses 50 volts. 2800 over 50 is just 56 amps. So that's why the amperage here is lower with the small prop. That's it basically. It's uh, a little bit difficult to get your head around and it's called the duty cycle. So it looks like this is the perfect prop, or at least this size. I could cut this one down on a lathe as well, um, just the diameter to see how this one does. But I know I need about this size, I think. If you know a lot about uh, RC and propellers and all of this, uh, please let me know what your opinion is, if I should use a smaller one or a different prop altogether. The thing is, I can't find any props that are smaller than this diameter, because this is for two horsepower, and they don't make one horsepower props. Yeah. Board is ready, this is ready, this is ready. Uh, now I just need to waterproof this completely because these are not waterproof yet. Then I need to uh, fix some straps to this and some mounting holes to this. I don't even have these holes here like, like this one. And of course, mount this to the proper mast and make some kind of uh, cage around here so I don't get my foot into the prop. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. My name is Max Maker and I hope I inspired you to take a project and tackle it. I don't think there's anything that you cannot learn and if you're stuck somewhere you can always ask people on the internet for help. That's why I want to thank these guys very much for their support and I also want to thank my patrons. And the last thing is, as always, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. You have no idea how happy I am for your comments and your support. Thank you guys.